Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm Will, and I'm joined by my co-host over here, the Grease. Say hello, Grease. I am the co-host. The host with the most. The host with the I hosted a party in the Nook the other night. I know. We had some legends show did you up. Get, did you get injections as well? I did not. It was a Botox and bourbon party. Yeah. And my wife does Botox injections. As if you couldn't tell. Cause some Look at week, that forehead. Because some weeks his eyes don't move. <laughs> oh, man. man, it's pretty natural right now. Um, <laughs> so, you and I have uh, the, different uh, definitions of El Natural. Yeah, so there was some people upstairs getting Botox, and then there was a lot of people down here drinking bourbon. Now, did anyone start off down here drinking bourbon, have a little bit too much bourbon, and go get Botox? There was a lot of people that were drinking in the basement that said, I gotta tell my wife about this. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you Se- know, second question: is there, any, is there any ethical legal issues? Kind of like you know, you shouldn't give someone who's been drinking a tattoo. Like, is there anything like that with Botox? Like, they're asking for an injection, but they clearly are intoxicated. I don't know if there's legal issues. Yeah, but that sounds great. It's probably a HIPAA violation. <laughs> I don't. Do you know what HIPAA is? Yeah, I do. Do no harm. It's the people. It's the people that get real mad if you share information. Hippocratic oath. Is that where it comes from? No stems. No, it <laughs> actually doesn't. <'cause laughs> HIPAA, I think, is like Health and Privacy Act and Protection Act. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. In Hippocratic, maybe they tried to find something close to it because a lot of times that's how the government operates. They're like, "This will be cool. This is the Work Act." Willing to operate rough knowledge. Knowledge act. It's yeah. just really about getting people into schools. I'm all about knowledge. That's not true. That is true. I love looking at knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> you got a fine set of knowledge. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm like, Dang, girl, you got knowledge. Yeah. I, I seek oh it out. God. I sure do. Yeah. I, I do. All right. So we got some stuff to talk about, but the, the whiskey world is a flutter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With a new, I was triggered a little with bit. A new, I think this one actually got me, too. <laughs> At this point, I was like, you know what? Screw them. <laughs> like, I get it, but it's also like, really? So there's a new Weller. Surprise, surprise. Everybody knows that. Here's my thing. However, Here's we're going to talk about it. Why not? Spread the love with some of the other brands like Elmer T. Lee. You know, like, why not create a few extra, maybe even Blanton's? Why what, not what do about a, Elmer T. Lee Rye? Why not do Ancient Age something or other? Right. But instead, it's like, Weller, let's add a tenth. Let's do it. <laughs> let's really, let's really go I, after it and only have like just a little bit. Well, of in this one, product. I really think that uh, it was, clearly they're not hurting for wheat whis- wheated bourbon. One hundred percent. They're just like you get a wheat whiskey, you get a wheat whiskey, <laughs> you get a wheat whiskey. Yeah. So I, you know, I was probably the longest defender, the longest holdout, even with the single barrel. I'm like, I get the nuance. You know, like I would have been, I was a homer for for Buffalo Trace. Yeah. But this one, it's like, okay, it's Daniel Weller. The bottle, cool. Oh, it's a the very vintage looking, looking old school bottle shape with a nice gold medallion, not just like a sticker of the Weller logo. Then you like the scripted W. It's beautiful. And then and there's something is, on top that helps you know where you're going. Yeah, and this is where they did go full tater. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, this is where they, it's like, okay, they were the original topper, but it was. Tasteful, and they only did one product with it. The Blanton's horse, obviously. Uh huh. And everyone was trying to be cool like that and come up with their own stuff. And and you have a baker's dozen around here. I guess Caribou Crossing is technically a Sazerac product as well. But yeah. Um. But I digress. This has a compass on top. Right. A big thick. Gold topper with a compass inlaid on top. I'm going to be honest with you, Will. This is for deep sea fishing, okay? (laughs) You take the bottle out. You're having a good time. When all of your electronic devices go off because a shark ripped out the satellite, wherever that satellite is, right? now you can find your way home. 
Or at least, <laughs> I, if it came down to it, I don't know if I'd trust this compass, but yeah, I mean, you, you would do with what you have. Well, for the price, it better be a working compass. Yeah. This uh, is $500. Right. <laughs> They're also going whistle pig pricing. They're like, you know what? Let's let's shoot for the moon. 500 Like, all of the other products that fall within their limited release, like they were always the ones that underpriced them. Like the, the any of the BTAC stayed true to their own. Right. And, and they decide, you know what? We're going to get a, we're going to get a just shy of 12 year old bur weeded bourbon. And it is supposed to be different. It's an experimental wheat strain. That is an Egyptian grain called Emmer wheat. And the it's it's paying tribute to Daniel Weller, the grandfather of William LaRue Weller, who arrived in the United States in 1794. Here's where the compass comes yeah, in. Yeah, because he crossed the ocean. <laughs> yeah, he crossed it like... <laughs> he said to go east, so that's the other way. So he fought in the Revolutionary War. He embarked on a flatboat voyage down the Ohio River with wife and children and ultimately settled in Kentucky in 1794, following in his father, Johann Weller's footstep steps. That's a plural steps uh, who distilled rye whiskey used as currency in early American barter economy. He soon began producing whiskey and leased his still to proprietors like Jacob Hirsch to supplement his income. When he died, he left no will. All of this is coming from the Buffalo Trace website, by the way. He left no will, requiring his son Samuel to purchase his stills and equipment to continue the family legacy, which he would ultimately pass down to his son. So all that, all of his stuff went away? No. Like it like also, it wasn't like commercially producing it. Okay. He wasn't like, he didn't have a still set up and then he was like sending it to the tavern and sent people coming by. It was like more, you know. Not necessarily on the up and up. Yeah. Well, that's like the whole... Well, and, the back, whole, and back uh, then, it's not like whiskey was in like well, the, the boom we're in now. The whiskey... Oh, no, no. It was a currency. It's even what he they reference. Oh. Yeah. In the US, because they would have like... Well, I mean, it's a currency right now. Surplus of grain and one way to, to store it and to not it just like rot and go to waste was to make something that was not going to spoil. And that would be... Either corn liquor, which is where like bourbon's roots came from, and then rye in Pennsylvania and Maryland and and the Northeast was very popular. Like George Washington had rye stills, and they would distill this, and that actually is where the first taxation came in in the United States was um, around taxing the rye whiskey. Mm. It was a, a, a tax put on the people distilling and it was to try to help pay for the military efforts and it caused something called the whiskey rebellion and literally they had to send u.s military to put down like an insurrection of of distillers that were fighting back against a local um governor or, or mayor or something some sort of uh, uh they picked up arms yeah they were in a shooting war with them in Pennsylvania. Okay, so this wasn't like cease and desist. No, stuff. no, 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 no. Like he was like trying to levy the taxes on them. They're like, the hell you are. <laughs> <laughs> and it got into a shooting war that George Washington actually had to send troops to put down the, the rebellion. I mean, I'm on the side of the distillers in this one. So I guess I'm right. on the wrong side of history. Well, George Washington was a distiller. He should have. Right, he should have been sympathetic. Also, it's a little bit Alexander Hamilton's fault. Oh, uh, because I've, I've were, seen that. A, I've seen that on the play. It was a taxation he, thing, he, though. He did all the taxes. They, it was like the you know the distillers have always gotten the short end of the stick, hundred percent, when it comes to taxes. And so it's always been the hey, who? Well, can, what's something we know? Consumers we can raise are getting a lot the short of end of the stick. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Five hundred dollar compass. Okay, yeah, for yeah, all that for to less say. for for five hundred dollars for less age than Weller twelve. What's the it, proof on it? Ninety four. Ninety four. <laughs> Just it's a an experimental bit. Should grain the grain. Yeah, I understand, but you know uh, what? They <laughs> they have a product that they've loved for generations, or however long it's been. Well, since seventeen ninety four. Well, not really. 
Yeah. It's All right. So done. now we've it's got done differently. I'm just saying that there's a tried and true for a reason. You could do an experimental, like, okay, I guess if they would have let, if they would have released that under the EH Taylor brand, right? Like, that type like, of well, like Amaranth or, uh, which was grain of the gods, uh, you know, um, yeah, but seasoned grain. wood was the last weeder. And no, but I'm also I'm just saying like Amaranth proof. was using an alternative grain. 100%. So it's yes. like doing E.H. Taylor, which who I'm knows? just saying they've done wheat before. When they laid this down, it may have been that was the concept, is that it's just going to go in the experimental special release of E.H. Taylor. Mm -hmm. But then somewhere along the way, it's not like if they decided to make this experiment that they're like, oh, we could have made a weller, but we told it when it was just baby distillate that oh. it would grow up to be Colonel <laughs> right. Taylor's special right. release. No, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but I mean, can we list off the, the wellers now? We've got Weller Antique, Special Reserve. 12. 12 years. CYPB. CY, single, single barrel. barrel full proof. proof. Um, William LaRue, and now Daniel Craig Weller. Yeah, James I, think Bond all, I think that's all of them. It's eight. It's a lot. It's got. It's a lot. That's a that's a lot. That's benchmark territory. That's a lot for one particular line. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like right. E. H. Taylor. It's a new release every year. There's a new batch of barrel proof. All that stuff. Um, but then, <laughs> and it's but Daniel Weller is going to be the experimental line. This is going to be. This, they're going to do something different with it, I think, in perpetuity. <laughs> what, what verbiage, what verbiage <laughs> alludes to that? Well, it says that on their website, the Daniel Weller experimental line is inspired by <laughs> Daniel Weller and his pioneering They spirit. called it a line. Yeah, like they're they, inferring, hey. Yeah, because those words. They're, they're pulling a Steve Jobs and saying one more thing. Let me go this ahead and say. This is going to keep going. If it goes on the website, every freaking word has been gone over by attorneys like crazy. Yeah. And so if they say the line, I agree. I think there's more coming. There's going to be more coming. What if it's What if it's consistently an experimental process? That's what it says. It's an experimental line. It's an experimental That's line. That's what the word experimental meant that line. they put on the website. Well, I, I didn't. You fixated on line. You, you completely blew past the experimental part. Right. What you doing with your hands there? Experimental line. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't notice that they were holding hands. Yeah. yeah. I just want to know when we're going to get a different flavor of bourbon cream. Like peppermint? They do peppermint. No, they just do the standard. Okay. Well, I mean, others do. Right. Bailey's. Bailey's. Bailey's is, knows where it's at. Right. Yeah. They do. I, I I like Bailey's. Yeah. I like to put it in my hot chocolate. Didn't you uh, leave a bottle of Bailey's under your sink? That was Irish <laughs> cream. Which is what Bailey's is. What? Well, it was not name brand. <laughs> it was not name brand. Yeah, you it just literally well said Irish cream. <laughs> And yeah, it's a uh, Kirkland signature Irish cream. I got it. So we had a stock the bar party mm -hmm. for me prior to getting married. So like everybody yeah. that was invited, I brought, I brought you a bottle of gin. You did. Yeah. Uh, I'm sapphire. Like, yeah. I'm like, he's a weak man. <laughs> I'm not getting him anything okay. harder than some okay, back, Bombay Sapphire. Back then I was into <laughs> vodka and Sprite. I know. I was like, but he needs a little bit more class than, than the vodka. Right. Because he asked everybody for Smirnoff. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I did not. You thought I'm in love it. Not Smirnoff. Yeah. I was a great gooseman. Oh, you were not. I yeah. was. Oh, only every once in a blue moon. <sighs> you were not uh you were not on the regular having gray goose. I had a You a had lot. a lot of Smirnoff. Svetka was Sp my I was about to say. And you dabbled in Svetka. <laughs> 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 Tastes the same. Yeah, it tastes neutral. You know, when it I, tastes like nothing. When I got married, my my palate was for food was <laughs> not where it needed to be. My wife I'm said gonna, I'm gonna bump the brakes there. Is it where it needs to be now? Dude, I'm eating salads, I'm eating <laughs> vegetables, I eat onions. Like I used to not hit any of that. I stuff. tell everybody about your egg salad sandwich you'd make or your egg sandwich. Well, what you do, <laughs> I have these square bowls, and I crack two eggs in there, whip it around. I put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. It comes up. 
I whip it one more time <laughs> and another 30 seconds. It comes out looking like a square freaking e- scrambled egg. You throw some cheese on it and you put it on some mayo bread, like bread with mayo on it. Oh, I, I understand it, the concept. And it fits perfectly. Dude, <laughs> Willet needs to have me come I and have, show them how to do this. You haven't lived until you've seen Grease. Uh, half a handle of benchmark in on a canasta night, decide he needs to make himself an egg sandwich because he turns into a chef extraordinaire. <laughs> and the fascination of the bowl fitting the bread perfectly, he he will wax poetic about how the bowl is the perfect size of the bread. <laughs> it's so good. And, uh, I mean, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you still make those? Um. I have probably a couple years during COVID. <laughs> I mean, just things cut. were rough. Just cut. <laughs> just, you know what? I don't want to make like other things that I was going to make. I'm just going to go in there, crack a couple eggs and make this thing happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and uh, solid microwave egg. Dude, at least I didn't make <laughs> nachos like how, that night. It's how with your saltines and, and American singles. <laughs> well, that was that was that was in a pinch. I like tortilla <laughs> chips. That was in a dag. Do you normally put American craft singles on tortilla chips? Yes. Oh my gosh. And and I put I throw some feta on there, a little <laughs> sharp cheddar, and then I put jalapenos on it. Now it's craft singles. It's is uh, the base. It's Greek American nachos. It's, yes, they're fantastic. I just love cheese. So however much cheese I can get on there. It's so. Fun. <laughs> no, here's what you should be doing. You've got Whiskey Mutant, our buddy Eric over there, who does like like uh, snacks, candy, snacks, chips, stuff like that, yeah. pairs it with whiskey. You should do YouTube shorts that are cooking with grease. Uh, and Have it's you like seen the you hot share, dog one? You share a recipe and pair it with a whiskey, and it's real short because, unfortunately, you can get very long-winded about your very simple recipes. Okay. Like, you try to extend sandwich. it. You want to do it like... Oh, we're making an egg sandwich, and we're pairing it with Benchmark, just like we did in the old days. Bowl, scramble eggs, microwave, scramble, microwave. <laughs> Tastes like regret and losing a canasta. Perfect YouTube Just story. cut that. Just you use it. Well, no, because I don't eat that <laughs> crap. <laughs> I almost got him. That was, that was good, though. That was a solid. That was a pretty good. That was a pretty good I mean, little. You could ham it up a little bit, but no ham on the sandwich. Ooh, just egg. I like Canadian bacon. That's ham, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, they just don't know how to say. They say things differently, like sorry, um, a boot, roof, bag, Canadian bacon. That's how they say ham. It's just sound. It's the accent that makes it sound different. I'm going to open this because now that it's rag on grease night, apparently, uh, this is uh, copper and cask yep. from Daveco yep. single barrel selection, six years old. Oh, look at that. Five, five, five. Yeah. 55.5%. Well, te- technically, it's like eight years old now. <laughs> right. It just didn't age anymore. Um, this was when, when I was on a on a real copper and cask kick, because I really liked them. Our buddy Chris Prokopiak, who's Prokopi. our buddy. Yeah. Um, we talk about him often because he's very generous. Uh, he sent me a bottle, and Grease found the box. Um, I was cleaning it out. About a week ago. I was cleaning out for the... Nook party. He sent this well over a year ago. Yeah. So he did. But that's also on him because I warn everyone. <sighs> and we've got like don't send to the grease. 20 samples from him in that box, too. Like so many samples. Welcome back to the Chris cask. And he goes, Well, I, I hope that Pappy 15 is still in there. And I was like, yeah, Me too, baby. <laughs> Me too. All right. So what's so this is copper and cask? What? This is barrel uh, single barrel. Yeah, uh, seventy percent corn, twenty one percent rye, nine percent malted barley. MGP. That sounds great. Six years old. In the barrels, like the the run of barrels that they got from MGP at Copper and Cask are just real good, fantastic. So, and I mean, uh, it smells fantastic. I know this one's coming home with me because it's, well, it's been yours. at your house long enough. It's yours. Yeah, if I hadn't drank it by now, <laughs> <Done>. yeah, 
<laughs> Which, by the way, I did share some Four Roses LE the other night, but there's more That's than fine. No, there's no, more than fine. half left. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I just didn't want you to look at it and be like, hey! No, it's what it's here for. Um, uh, oh, 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 uh, Penelope Elegance, right? Yes. So I, um, uh, we had a block party. Did I tell you about this? At the block party, I um, had to run back to the house to get something. And I'd oh, been talking yes. about bourbon. And I yeah. poured up two samples for some neighbors of the Elegance. Because someone had brought up like Architect, Penelope Architect. I was like, oh, you got to try this. Penelope, it's one of my favorites. Um, and it's spicy, floral, oily. I, I Now I know why he sent this to me. Oak. Ooh. Great oak. Wow. There's like a wonderful finish. <laughs> ooh, wow. Yeah. I'd let it finish. <laughs> that gummit, you son of a gun. Uh, <laughs> it's like not even <laughs> veiled. <laughs> No, yeah, no. Um, coconut, coconut. It's got coconut. It's. I don't like coconut. But you like this, right? It's got coconut or pineapple. It's the guy like a little peanut. Finishing colada. coconut trees, um, casks. So back to what I was saying is, I took them this uh, um, sample, and I was out with the kids playing in the yard, and one of the neighbors who I gave the sample to walked by. And was like, um, hey, we had that sample you gave us. That was incredible. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, real good. He's like, you were kind of telling me, but I didn't really grasp it all the time. Like, what exactly was it? I was like, well, it's Penelope. But James Smith, who's one of our partners in our barrel club, um, he's he's out there, but he's a genius. Uh, he uh, you blended it. He blended it. He got stock of Penelope. <laughs> yeah, it'll, that'll dry. Will it? Yeah. No, that was a uh, copper and cask. <laughs> I just poured. Um, I should probably turn off the computer, right? Just poured bourbon all over this computer. Will it pop? <laughs> just air it out. <laughs> I'm just going to shut it down just for good measure for a minute. <laughs> um. So anyhow, so he uh, was like, it's really good. I'm like, our buddy James Smith, he blended it. And then we sent, like, he was available for the Barrel Club, Oak and Thieves. He's like, oh, man. So, like, still available? And I go, oh, no. It's long gone. Mm -hmm. But. I was one of our fastest barrels. Mm -hmm. I was a kind neighbor, and I gave him one of mine. You gave him one. Mm -hmm. You had, like, three total. I know. I was being a really kind neighbor. That is kind. Yeah. You could, you, I am pro like 200 milliliter sample. I will say, went light years with the wife as well. That was a really neighborly thing for you to do. Oh, you're, I was like, you're what? Like, why are we talking about like you? <laughs> no, not with his wife. talking no, his no, wife. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't it know. It went really well with his wife, too. No, with, with mine. With mine. The wife. And she was like, that was really kind of you. It was like, ah, it was, it's nothing. It's, it's just, nothing. It's, it's just, just whiskey. It's just whiskey. And she's like, you're a good man, Will Haynes. You're a good man, Will Haynes. I was like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah. You say you love me. What? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> There's an old saying that if I, I don't, I'm I don't, just, I don't know this. Old I'm just thing. gonna pause. Yeah, that's a that's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, don't get mad at me because <laughs> I quit talking. Grease just self censored. <sighs> I've been decent at that recently. Yeah, hadn't had to edit me. Davaco's shiny penny is what it says on the back. That's a great name for a barrel pick. Copper and cask. Davaco's silver. Well, Davaco is the liquor store right but the silver penny silver penny shiny penny Sh i was about to say i thought it was shiny copper penny dude you want to see if this pumps <laughs> yeah we don't we got to get one of our little thing about pop we'll do it later um we have some other news though yeah well that's what i had pulled up but there was I a huge it. lawsuit the outcome has been determined yeah let me pull it up and will is gonna pull it up but if you own dogs and you're a whiskey lover, you have probably seen ads for this on Facebook. If you haven't, 
then I don't think you like dogs and whiskey combined. Yeah, yeah, because you would have been targeted. So, 100%. The Supreme Court of the United States rules against dog toy resembling liquor bottles. So, this was a bad Spaniels silly squeakers, and it looked just like it was the iconic square bottle. It said uh, old number two uh, on the top. It's an old number seven. Dog. It's a poop joke. Right. Um, it said, oh, the old number two on your Tennessee carpet is what it said. And it said 43% poo. Uh, anyhow, it was a gimmick. It was a parody right. dog toy. It looked very similar. And y'all have seen it on the screen, but it looked we'll very similar. Uh, <laughs> the... The thing here is that the Supreme Court said the First Amendment did not protect the chew toy for dogs resembling the bottle of Jack Daniels. Now, they have dog Perignon that looks like a, a Dom Perignon bottle. There, like, There's a bunch of these parody yeah. dog toys, uh, like Fido's instead of Tito's, um, that's supposed to look like a vodka bottle. Um, now, I was uh, they reversed a lower court decision. Like the appeals court said that this was protected on the First Amendment, that it was parody. It wasn't going to, it wasn't actually infringing upon the trademarks because it would, no one would think that it was actually a bottle of whiskey. So therefore it wasn't cutting into their profitability and marketability. On Jack Daniels' bottle. Um, And the appeals court judge said it was a lighthearted dog related alteration. Um, But. The uh, Justice Elena Kagan wrote for the unanimous court. So this wasn't like divided between conservative and liberal ideology. This was nine to zero. And it said she seemed amused by the dispute. This case is about dog toys and whiskey. She wrote two items seldom appearing in the same sentence. But. They said that because the the actual bottle has a bunch of trademarks, like Jack Daniels, the shape, yes, the, all this stuff is that number it was, seven. Um, she even said in the opinion, it said, "Recall what the bottle looks like, or better yet, retrieve a bottle from wherever you keep your liquor. It's probably there." Um, that yeah, that said that basically, uh, it, the trademark generally turns on whether the public is likely to be confused about the source of the product. And so that was one of the so key it things. It would look like Jack Daniels is selling a a dog toy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that's where the issue lies. Right. And so that it's although because surely, let's be honest, how have they not already had a dog toy? Right. I mean, they right, have, they do and I think their that's, merchandising is insane. I think that is part of what um it, what the opinion was is that there was no uh, – the infringement claim there rises and falls on the likelihood of confusion. And because of all the similarities, like it wasn't just a round bottle with a, a label that was similar. Right. It was – details that were mimicked in each detail Even the black was kind of wrapping at the top. Yeah. So it, it's interesting. I try I mean I I'm kind of torn on it because mm-hmm. I like the concept of parody, parody. And, and and commentary, social commentary through parody. And so I wonder about implications uh that this could have on that. Like which is weird when if they start citing you know, Jack Daniels versus Bad Spaniels in in like pair in SNL like gets sued over something, you know, and they're citing a dog toy case. But all that to say, I do understand that one is a marketable product. It's not like a song parody mm-hmm. or a film parody or so, or even like something on YouTube that's mocking something. Um, it's actually a commercial product that you're wanting people to buy. And they're almost, if there is confusion, their sales could be artificially elevated because of the similarities to Jack Daniels. So, right. Right. I wonder if Jack comes out with that toy though. You like that toy? They should win the lawsuit and then just buy the company. Right. <laughs> Cause they're probably bankrupt. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would assume, I mean, they can't do this. To, if this was their only toy, I can't imagine that you're like, I got one idea. 
and it's bad spaniel. <laughs> That's it. You're not going to do like a ball, a little squeaky ball, a little tug of war rope. Nope. They've been done. <laughs> oh, I got a phony liquor bottle. You know, those have been done too. Yeah, but not with this much detail. And it doesn't squeak. Does it not squeak? It squeaks. I think it squeaks. I just, yeah, it's got a squeak. <laughs> What's a dog toy without a squeaker? Uh, <laughs> so this is interesting, though. That uh, so uh, Justice Alito, who's on the conservative side of the court, yep. so the opposite side of where the the opinion was written by Elena Kagan. Kagan, but said um, during the case he did a hypothetical, which is very common in uh, Supreme Court oral arguments, and says. Um, he has this hypothetical about a pitch meeting to a Jack Daniels executive. Somebody in Jack Daniels comes to the CEO and says, I have a great idea for a product that we're going to produce. It's going to be a dog toy, and it's going to have a label that looks a lot like our label, and it's going to have the same, have a name that looks a lot like our name, Bad Spaniels. And what <laughs> what's going to it's be gonna make a poop reportedly joke. on this dog toy is dog urine. <laughs> Uh, suggesting that customers were unlikely to think the chew toy is produced or endorsed by the distiller. Um, so he was using that as trying to like draw out the people that were defending the toy as like, is this a hypothetical? And, and for either side, can you defend that like this, that this is actual genuine confusion? But I think the point there also is that Jack Daniels does market their brand so much uh -huh. is that it's almost as if his hypothetical and, and maybe if it were to the uh, lawyers for Jack Daniels, then maybe they would have responded with that. Isn't that far fetched mm -hmm. now? Maybe it wouldn't be the, the urine. Yeah, hey, <laughs> like maybe it wouldn't be like the poop jokes and everything. But if you go into downtown Lynchburg, you can find just about anything with the Jack Daniels logo on it, and those are Jack Daniels official products. Uh huh. So, I, I see what he's trying to do there, and I do wonder if uh, it, the the article didn't say who that hypothetical was directed at, whether it was against the defense right. of the uh, the dog toy, or if it was for the lawyers for Jack Daniels. If it were to the lawyers of Jack Daniels, I would have hoped that they would respond pretty clearly with. Yeah, actually, that meeting happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they're they're as much of a merchandising company as they are a distillery because the brand itself is so valuable. Mm -hmm. It's it's just like Coca Cola. Coca Cola has all sorts of trinkets and memorabilia, and everything. it's like a top just brand that exists. Right. So. I mean, people collect Jack Daniels stuff all day, every day. Yeah, and sometimes twice on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday? That's why they do it two times. They forgot they did it the first time. What about Dog Toy Tuesday? Mm, uh, you can't say that yet. Can't? Too soon. They just lost, Grease. The wounds are still fresh. They're still licking their wounds like a dog. Get it? Dogs lick their wounds. They lost. You were a dog just then. You just totally licked your arm. As if you were as if you were about to taste whiskey. Actually, I think that was a, <laughs> a cat licks their arm, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's how it happens. Yeah. Um, Woo! Will, we had a really cool meeting last we week. We did, yeah. We met with the new owner and proprietor of Southern, Southern Whiskey Society. Society. I've been getting messages um, from people. I knew that Chris was was done with the event. Yep. And he's done with events. He's taking Made South the company in a different direction. Um, so the holiday market, he sold to someone else who's going to be a good steward of it and continue it forward. Um, and I knew that he was looking to do the same with Southern Whiskey Society, but hadn't heard really an update until I started getting ads of like Southern Whiskey Society coming back to uh -huh. Franklin, Tennessee, and getting people reaching out, being like, whoa, what's the deal? We thought it was done. Well, then we got an email from our good buddy, Matt Maxey, who's with Visit Franklin, the Wisconsin County He's Visitors great. Bureau. And Be careful, because well, I don't want to spill this. we got more to drink later. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I spilled most of my whiskey on my computer, so... Uh, Anyhow, he's like, hey, you need to meet uh, Tiny Irwin, 
who is the new owner. He and his wife, Leah, are the new owners of Southern Whiskey Society. Self-proclaimed, not so tiny. Yeah, no, no. When we met up with him, he was like, my name's Tiny, but I'm not I'll, so tiny. He's like, I'll be the guy who's not so tiny. Right. And it's like, first of all, that's a great tagline. Second of all, there could be several non-tiny people. So if we go in up to, hey, Tiny. Who are you calling Tiny? <laughs> punch like, you in the face. How many jaws have gotten broken because that's his tagline? Now, I will say, Tiny came up to me mm-hmm. and said, am I meeting you here? And I was like, you tiny? <laughs> He's like, I'm tiny. So we went up, uh, we went to 1799, the bar there at uh, the Harpeth Hotel in downtown Franklin. Great old fashion. Had some drinks with him. Uh, hit it off very quickly. He's uh, He's got a good vision for Southern Whiskey Society. Um, he was speaking our language. We, we talked for well over About an hour. An hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. And... So we're uh, we're interested in just hearing more about it. I'm looking forward to going to the event in August. It's in uh, I have to check the dates, but we'll we'll post it somewhere. But we're going to talk to him, maybe have him on here to let him talk a little bit about his vision for it. But he's got what stuck with me. Big you plans for yeah. it. Yeah, he 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 alluded to you know this year um, is you know. He he's big on under promising over delivering. So I've, I've on said paper, that to you before. You I should, know you should get into that. I should get into that. The um the uh, event is going to look and feel a lot like the other one, except with a few surprises thrown in, and I'm excited to see what those surprises are. But long term, over the next couple of years, this guy has a lot of plans. Yeah, and a lot of experiences surrounding the weekend. What, and all that I, stuff, what so. I was concerned about when I first saw it being advertised and, and had no, I mean, not like there's any place for us to be like, how, you know, how dare you sell it to someone that we don't know or something, you know, like it's that that's neither here nor there. But when I first saw it coming back and having not necessarily had a conversation with Chris, like, oh, who's, you know, who's taking it over? My first fear wasn't that um, it wasn't going to be well run because I know Chris wouldn't just hand it off right. to someone to that isn't going to be able to perform and that could give him necessarily a bad look like, oh, man, you just handed this off and this person did nothing. But I was concerned because whiskey events can be a dime a dozen and can be very corporate and just not have charm. Right. Um, that I was concerned that it could just become – Another very corporate um, trade show. Yeah, trade show. Walk up to the booth, get your sample, step down, walk your sample, step down. That it it was going to lack the character of Franklin and the charm of Franklin, which is what made it such a fun event and why what Chris built was so great and why people loved it. Um, but after that conversation, he was talking about things about like, oh, we, we saw this as an opportunity to really – make an impact on our community, on our home. Mm-hmm. He was saying all the right things unprompted. It was, wasn't us like, right, right, right. tell us how you're going to keep it very Franklin, you know? <laughs> right. But no, but he, it's like the things that when people that listen to the show would come from across the country to come to that show, to, the, to that uh, event, would always say like, oh, we want to move here. And the only thing they were doing was going to one event, really. Like they were, they were going and experiencing the love and the charm and the, character of franklin at a whiskey event Mm -hmm. um i don't think you could take southern whiskey society in that form out of franklin until it really uh develops in a different way like it wouldn't be the same event in a different place um so that's why the things that he was saying were very encouraging to me that yeah i I think this is going to be really cool and i think it's going to have uh, a great trajectory. And that's the other thing that he was saying as well, is that this isn't, well, let's hop in and try to do it one year. No, this is a, we have a long-term vision for how this will be remaining the premier whiskey event in the South mm-hmm. and, and that it'll keep continuing to bring people to experience our town. So that made me happy. I like that. Yeah. No, I, a- after meeting with tiny and hearing his vision for it, I was just super excited also, super genuine guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, 
I'm excited and to see what he does with he's the He's probably listening to this, so um, take everything we're saying with a grain of salt and just reach out directly because we you know, yeah. SouthernWhiskeySociety.com. <laughs> Check it out. If though. you need, if you if you get pissed off about something that we said, <laughs> SouthernWhiskeySociety.com. So that's tickets that. are available now. They are. We'll be there. Come say hey. We will. Mm-hmm. Hello. How are you? It's me. No, I was doing that guy, that tasting guy again. Hello? No. <laughs> it's Hello. me. How are you? I Just don't... fine, thanks. Dun, 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 dun. I don't like you. You're still you're still trying to stick with that. I'm still trying to get us a copyright strike by my singing. I'm be fine with it. Just shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> So we just go from zero strikes to three. <laughs> like, you're done. Yeah, how offensive it was. Yeah, you have to mark it not just as copyright, but also offensive material. By could saying, cause, hello, it's me? Your singing could, could cause uh, oh, emotional distress. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Ask Joey. I'm at it. He knows. Joey? Joey knows. Joe, Joey has told me that you have caused him so much distress with your singing voice. Joey was the best man in my wedding. I know. <laughs> I know. He felt obligated. I'm, I'm walking away from this episode. You better call Not him. Not even having my best man at my side at this point. No, no. He's upset still about the singing voice. He's smelling whiskey still. Mm-hmm. What you think about it? I still want it. Like Can't I don't it. like fine. no, like I don't want to go away from it. It's it is really good. It's very good uh-huh. for a six year old MGP. It's yeah. it's light one. years above other six year olds we've we've tried. And it's one eleven proof. I think a very very good solid very proof. good proof. One ten to one fifteen sweet yeah. spot for us. Mm-hmm. I like a little bit lower. I like one oh five to one ten. <laughs> I'll, I'll dabble in 115. 105 to 110? What is in that? What do you mean? Low proof, four roses. Yeah. It's right. The best whiskey out there. It is. It's not even <laughs> low. It's still cast strength. It's just. Right. What are you talking about? That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying, All day long, bud. I know, but like, what is it? Weller 107 is above, and that's a really good one of you. Weller 107 is within 105 oh, to 110. Oh, you said 105 dumb, dumb. to 110. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. Man, I pulled out a solid dum-dum. I haven't done that in quite some time, yeah. but you got me there. I did. <laughs> Trying to think what else, man. Well, we don't have a 15. You should have gone like 101 to 110. No. Because that would have included a lot more. <laughs> Why? I can have my own sweet spot range. And you know what? I don't want my sweet spot to be... Of a daggum hallway. I don't want it just to be all these whiskeys walking down. I want it to be narrow, and I want it to be pointed, and I want it to be precise. That's what I want in my sweet spot of whiskey. Hello. <laughs> it's me. People need to rewind that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, old Will Sweet Spot just coming you out. You don't want a hallway. You want a very narrow right. sweet spot. That <laughs> straight. Straight and narrow. For with, me. A po- with a point, I yeah. think is what you said. <laughs> it's very pointed. Precise. That was very, that was very poignant. I want you to drink this. I don't. Motor oil sample. No, we need Do to- you think you would throw up? A hundred. I almost threw up smelling it. What if you did a, smell it? What if you? I have. What if you dip your pinky and lick it? How much would you need me to pay you to try that? Um, I'm gonna shoot big because I don't want to do it. Ten really thousand dollars. Yeah, we're talking about this sample in the little mini mason <laughs> I, jar that's turned completely uh like black color. It yeah. looks like ink. It right. looks like it does look like permanent ink. ink, and as opposed to non permanent ink, I definitely not in a dare, and definitely not this for anything less this than ten thousand dollars. With the show, with that in my mouth, I know I don't want you to put the jar in your mouth. I want you to dip your pinky in. If it doesn't sting, when you dip your pinky in, lick the pinky. Just get a 
just a taste of that. Whiskey. I don't want to vomit, and I will. I from I don't just have... a just a drop, just a teensy bit. The people are watching, Grace. They're trying to see what you will do in this moment. Right, I'm going to say two dollars. Two dollars? Do you have cash? All I have is a twenty. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> I'll give you twenty dollars. No, twenty dollars, really? God, man, that's like a third of a gas. All right, you got to make sure people can see the, oh, the boom mic. It smells sour. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Is that enough? Yeah, probably. Eh, do one more dunk. All right, now do it. Now quickly to your mouth. It's not that bad, is it? I mean, it might kill me. <laughs> there you go. It, I'm good. <laughs> you refused the cash. I just, it wasn't the reaction that you and I thought it would be. Yeah. It's what, just, what flavor did you get? Because you were making faces, but you weren't like you weren't dry heaving like yet. Gritty, over oaked. Like I think it's got grass in there. and like sour need, grass. You may need a tetanus shot. Oh, I got one. When was the last time I got one? I don't know. It was before I had a kid. Mm. So about nine years ago. I think they're only good for seven. Really? Uh, something like that. I thought it was ten. Maybe it is ten. Let's see. How long <laughs> We've gotten to this hey. point in the show. <laughs> I really want to pump something. We need to come out with a video soon. Uh, ten years. Booster shots given every 10 years. So you should be all right. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this week on the podcast. We're not doing a 15 this week. We I had assume. copper and cask, straight bourbon whiskey. Keep buying It's these. a single barrel. It's a six-year-old, 111 proof. If you can find them Will. from two years ago, get them. We're right. Good. Will, is this a buy bar or pass for you? 100% buy. It's it's a 1,000% buy to me. Yeah, I think they're like I, 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, I would pay around 70 bucks for this bottle. Solid like, $70 if buy. It said, yeah. If it said $70, I'd be like, yeah, that mm -hmm. sounds right. Yeah. So It tastes great. Copper and cask, keeping that price low, which is really awesome. You know, because, I mean, there's, there's other brands out there that'll, you know, do something for four years and charge you like $1,000. Or like a $500 94 proof. 11 year Egyptian wheat strain. Right. Whiskey. Do we even, uh, the Egyptian wheat? That's what it says. They like, it ba says they, Emmer wheat. The wheat bows. Like papyrus. In the Bible, the wheat bow. Isn't it just papyrus? It's papyrus, but sure. No, it's papyrus. The paper? Yeah. What about it? It's called papyrus. Okay. We're going to have to look it up offline. I know. <laughs> Okay. Papyrus? That um, sounds not appetizing. But yeah, solid buy, copper and cask. Honestly, I've had their normal expressions and not a single barrel pick. Also very nice. Pretty daggum good. All right, folks. I think all of them are single barrels. Okay. Well, then I had a single barrel that I didn't know where it was from. That's fair. Right. All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching this week the podcast go ahead and subscribe if you're watching on youtube leave us a five-star rating and review on your podcast platform of choice if you're just listening hey folks if you want to join our barrel club oakandthieves.com if you want to hear about some jack daniels barrel strength rye that's coming up or some other things or if you just want to support the show get in on that town hall action Go to patreon.com slash the podcast. We'd appreciate it, and we'll see you there. We don't know Jack Grease, but we'll drink it.